Hi foxes and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany and I'm also known as Shop Foxboro and I am a purveyor of vintage goods, primarily clothing. Um, but I also do dabble in some housewares that catch my eye and this channel is mostly about um, selling vintage and how to do it and how to date stuff and um, how much it goes for and how to find it, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then I also have some like styling content in there as well. And so if that sounds really interesting to you, then I hope that you'll consider sticking around and subscribing, maybe checking out some of my other videos. And um, if you are returning to this channel, thank you so much. Uh, you may have noticed that I've been sort of MIA for the past two weeks or so. Um, and if you've reached out to me to ask like how it's going, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's been going well, but it has been very busy. So this video is going to be broken into two parts. The first part is a life update. There's nothing sad or anything in there. Um, it's mostly happy stuff. So if you are interested in uh, learning more about like why I've been absent, what I've been up to, then that, that will be a first. And if you are not interested, I do have cards. Um, so you can just skip ahead to the part that you would like to see. And then the next part of this video is going to be uh, me going over some of my favorite sales from July so far. Uh, usually I go through and I do a What's Old video every Monday morning and it goes live at 8 a.m. Um, I've missed the last two weeks and I just, I don't want to catch up. So uh, we're just going to go with my favorite sales and I'll talk a little bit about them. And uh, that way you can kind of see like what is selling and I don't have to go through every single thing. So that is what we're going to be doing. So I guess first things first, um, where have I been? <laughs> well, so two weeks ago now, I believe it was, I actually flew for the first time in probably almost two years to go see my mother who lives in Oxford, Mississippi. And um, we got to see each other in March of this year, but we did not see each other at all in 2020. So my mom lives in Mississippi and I live in New Hampshire. Um, and I have not lived in the same place as her since, you know, I went to college and, um, a lot of people have like a really close relationship with their mom or they like live nearby and I've just never been able to have that. So I don't like to let it go too long without going to see her. And because um, she has some like medical stuff where she has not gotten the vaccine yet, um, I am fully vaccinated. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go down and see her. Um, Plus I have like a little bit more of a flexible schedule. So I flew down just for a few days. I flew down on a Friday and stayed until Monday afternoon. It was um, a lot of fun, but also sort of a shit show. Um, my flight down there, first they like kept canceling and rearranging my flights for like, <laughs> I think I booked my flight in um, May after I was like fully vaccinated, I booked it I think in May for July and they canceled my flight twice, rescheduled it twice and I kept having to like call to fix it. So after all of that, um, I got to the airport on time. I, I decided to do a really early flight so that I could get there and we could have like that Friday to spend time together. And then I was going to fly home late on Monday so we could spend, you know, that time together. And so I ended up driving um, our extra like <laughs> sort of beater car to the airport to um, stay and park in the parking garage and like just be able to ferry myself back and forth without inconveniencing my husband. And um, 
So that all went pretty well for a drop off, except that there were like thunderstorms really bad that day in Memphis, my final destination. Um, and the flight was just like, like it got delayed in air. So we were en route and ever we had been like on time. And we were supposed to get there at 1030 in the morning and I didn't get off of the plane until 230 in the afternoon. And then we had to wait for our baggage and everything and I had not had any food. I was starving like it was just a mess but um, it was really nice to see my mom and if you're in the Memphis area we ate at this amazing restaurant called Babalu. It's in like um, the Overton Square area across from Bosco's and they had the best margaritas I've ever had in my life. Uh, it was all like tapas so they had like street tacos and the best Brussels sprouts I've ever had in my life. Um, yeah so if you're in the area, if you're in Memphis then uh, check that out. Um, but then while I was down there I got to see my friend Victoria from Super Geeked and we drove to Jackson on Saturday and we met up at the Jackson Bins. Um, it was Victoria and her mom and me and my mom and we had a lot of fun um, and I found a lot of really good stuff and then we went out to lunch and that was uh, really enjoyable too because we got to like sit down and talk more. Um, so I actually have a video coming out a little bit later this week that is going to be a collaboration with Victoria about her bins haul and my bins haul and I'm just gonna say my mom was on fire finding stuff for me. Um, like she found me a Johnny Was, Burberry, like all this stuff in the middle of Mississippi and I was like is this for real right now? So um, I'm really excited to do that haul with you guys and to show you sort of like what Victoria got, what I got. Um, and yeah, so I got back um, late at night and of course my car was dead in the parking garage, but um, they came and jumped me super fast. So yay for Massport. Uh, anyway, and then it's just been just like really busy. I have not been keeping up with um, all the things that I need to be doing for my business, which is definitely stressing me out a little bit. Uh, my Lister um, hasn't had anything new for two weeks now. So <laughs> two or three, I don't know. It's a lot. Anyway, so um, I'm definitely a little bit behind. Part of that is that my kids are both home with me. Um, and at the beginning of summer, I had arranged childcare um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with my niece. And at the start, like before she even started, she was like, well, can we drop it down to like just Monday and Wednesday? I was like, okay, um, I mean, I guess, you know, like I was trying to help my niece out. She was about to go to college, just like earning some low key money for the summer. Um, but then um, somewhere around like the start of July, she ended up telling me that she would not be able to watch them anymore. So <laughs> I now have no childcare. <laughs> Um, like I went from three day, like thinking I had three days to having two days to having no days. So we are towards the like middle end of July. I think it's like the 19th right now or something like that. And, um, yeah, so I signed my kids up for some summer camps and, um, those are gonna be okay. My son has one this week and I think it's just like, too much for him, my older son. And so he's been really like, like he doesn't want to go and it's a fight every morning. It's just really draining. Uh, but then next week they're going to be doing a summer camp together and it's a shorter summer camp. So I think that they're going to enjoy that more. But in terms of like work, um, it's from nine to one. And then obviously I have to like be there for pickup and drop off. So it's not a ton of work time, but you know what? I haven't had any like alone time in my house without my children in almost like, well, since March of 2020, I guess. So um, a while. 
so I'm not complaining about that. Um, but yeah, just kind of uh, busy and difficult to find time to do things. And honestly, um, of all the things that I, <laughs> that, of all the things that I do in my life, like YouTube is fun for me, but it's not, um, like I don't, it doesn't make me any money. Um, maybe like 60 bucks every month or something like that, but it's not enough to make it like a huge drive for me to do it. So this kind of falls to the wayside um, whenever I kind of get overwhelmed, which I have been. And I guess the last thing is that this year, um, one of my goals was to, well, work on, um, like, I don't know, what do you call this? Bettering yourself for just like, um, further education, like to sort of try and make sure that my brain doesn't atrophy and like be learning new stuff. So we have this really great community college um, that is the Cambridge uh, Center for Adult Education. And it is based out of obviously Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is like a suburb kind of of Boston. Um, I say suburb, but it's like in the heart of the city. It's, it's Boston pretty much. Um, but yeah, like a really, they have like a really rich um, Center for Adult Education with so many programs and um, the last time that my husband and I were going to Japan, I made him take a class with me. I needed kind of a like a refresher and I just wanted him to be able to say like, yes, no, where's the toilet? <laughs> so um, we drove down there and took classes. So I was familiar with it and I was getting like their mailers and stuff. And now all their classes are pretty much online because of COVID-19. And it turns out that's actually been kind of a blessing for me. So um, last semester I took a Japanese class. I took Japanese three um, and really, really loved it. Um, I'll be taking Japanese four in the fall when they open up registration. But for this like summer term, I am taking a writing class. If you did not know, I actually have a degree in creative writing, like that's actually my bachelor's degree is creative writing. Um, and for the longest time, like I've kind of, I've known that it's there and that I have it and that I'm a good writer and that there's no limit on when you can start writing or when you can be successful as a writer. Um, and I've always sort of known that at any point in my life, I could sort of, you know, pick up the gauntlet and write something um, of like substance and worth. And um, I feel like after 34, almost 35 years of life, I'm finally at a point where I have enough like world experience to and like travel experience and life experience and emotional experience to like write a story that's um, rich enough to satisfy my personal tastes, I guess, for literature. And um, so I've been taking this class and we ended up doing a writing prompt that um, I sort of fell in love with what I wrote and it is in the process of becoming a novel. So I am about a hundred printed pages deep um, writing this novel about a third of the way through the story the, that I have plotted out, um, which I have the whole thing figured out like where it's going, but there's always the writing to get there and then the, the fleshing it out and filling in the details. So uh, that's kind of the other thing that I've been working on in the past two weeks. Um, I guess like as a writer, when you get something in your head, there is nothing else in this world and you just have to get it out on paper, whether it's your outline or the words themselves. And so that essentially consumed me um, last week. And um, I don't regret it at all. I am totally happy with where I am and what is going on. But uh, yeah, that's sort of where I've been. That's why I have not been doing YouTube. There's not really 
anything negative going on in my life aside from not having the childcare that I expected. Um, definitely for my business, I thrive on routine. And I think once my boys are in school in August, that will really pick back up again. And um, I really expect to get a lot done and move forward really quickly with um, all of the projects that I have going on. But uh, in the meantime, we are still in the middle of summer, still don't have childcare, still taking that writing class, and uh, YouTube's just, you know, it's just down there right now. So it just kind of is what it is. And um, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to make any promises on videos or no videos or anything like that. Uh, I had originally planned on taking July off in the first place because I knew it was going to be really busy. Uh, but then I was just like, oh no, I can power through it. And honestly, it turns out I can't. So I don't know, but I do know that I have a haul video coming out later this week. And then I have a styling video for, um, my short story box that I am working on as well. So those are at least in the works. And aside from that, I'm not making any promises. <laughs> So let's um, go ahead and skip on to my favorite sales recently. And got my phone here. I have some tea. So we're gonna do Etsy first. And I've really been putting most of my attention onto Etsy and not as much attention onto Poshmark. Um, and that is because I am finding that on Etsy, I'm really getting like my asking price more or less almost all the time. And um, so I usually wait to list things on Poshmark because they tend to be selling um, pretty quickly on Etsy and they've been selling for full asking price. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at some of my recent orders. <clears throat> so this is for the month of July. And let's see. So the first thing is this little 1970s uh, dress, really, really sweet. It was like a sheer kind of like cotton gauze with like a almost like a purple poppy print down the sides and a little Peter Pan collar with a bow. Um, and it just kind of had very like 70s does 40s vibes. So like the silhouette was very 1940s, but the material and the print were both very 1970s. Um, and that dress sold for a full asking price of $66.99 and um, all my buyers on Etsy pay shipping so that was a good sale and I think it sold within like two or three days of listing so pretty quick on that one. This 1960s little crochet beaded bag I used in some of my um, photos when I was doing like a photo shoot for with different clothing pieces and um, it did have like a couple of damages like a crack in the handle um but it wasn't structural like it still worked fine it was just sort of aesthetic and um yeah so I actually got a decent amount of interest on this across multiple platforms I had some people lowball me um but I had a sale going on for 4th of July and someone bought it on sale so I made $39 on that one after their discount and I was happy with that. Um, that came from the large estate buy that I did back in January. Um, and I still have a ton of pieces from that, but yeah, so let's see what else. Oh yes. Um, this one was very cute. Also sold during my 4th of July sale. Everyone said this looks so cute on me and I thought it was funny because I didn't think it looked that cute on me, but you guys are the judge, right? So, um, it was like a plaid kind of prairie style dress, like big puff sleeves. I got this, um, 
from the Thrilling Wholesale Portal and I cannot remember how much I paid. I want to say like 10 or 15, something like that. Um, and when I got it, I'm pretty darn sure it was like a Mennonite dress. Like it just had that sort of con like the construction elements to it. It was very well made very heavy um uh, but that skirt was just like so swishy and fabulous and um I had a video for it too and so someone bought that for let's see after the discount $64 uh this dirndl dress took longer than I expected to sell I thought that it would sell a little bit quicker than it did but um it sold during the sale for $66. Sorry, I'm doing math in my head over here. And um, I was happy enough with that. I think I probably paid a little bit too much for this. I bought this off of Poshmark. At first I thought I would wear it myself, but um, I don't know. I just, once I got it, I decided I didn't want it for myself. So I ended up selling it. So I think after like cost of goods and stuff like that, I made about $40 on it, but not too bad. I also really enjoyed this sale of these little Dior um, like tap shorts. So I got these at the Goodwill outlet and there was a whole bunch of like size large lingerie from the 1980s and um these were in there and everyone that was sort of around me was like really grossed out by all of the uh, used lingerie from the 1980s and I was just over there like okay I'll take that okay I'll take that I mean these were just the cutest little tap shorts um they had like a scallop trim around the bottom and then Dior embroidered on the leg and those sold for, they sold on sale, so let me do this math here real quick, $47. So I had them listed for $55.99. They sold for $47. Let's see. Oh, this one sold the same day that I listed it. Um, this sold to... Uh, a repeat customer and I really hope that she she sent me a picture of the last dress that she got so I actually really hope that she sends me a picture in this jumpsuit um so cute it was like a rayon floral jumpsuit it was like navy blue and I had two that were very similar um and so I photographed them at the same time and this one I featured on my on my Instagram which is probably where she saw it and she bought it um within like an hour so she bought that within like an hour or two of listing it so I was really happy about that um I also sold these celestial celestial sun and moon pillows um I thought that these were super cute and I saw one of them in the bins at the Goodwill outlet and then I was like oh it's just one but I put it in my cart anyway and um this is bothering me I, I had to change my battery so let's see here okay um so I had one and then I found the other and so I was really excited about that um I cleaned them up a little bit, ran them through the dryer. I think I featured these in a haul video recently and they ended up selling for $55.99. So I was really happy with that. Um, let's see. Sold a couple of books, a clutch and a hat. Um, uh, we can talk about this Red Crusher hat. This sold, um, it had, it was just like a Connecticut Crusher hat, which is the brand, and it was um, like bright red, and then it had a feathered pin on the side, and that one sold for $53.99. So, um, especially if you see like a nice Crusher hat or a wool hat with like an embellishment on the side, uh, especially the, if the embellishment can be removed, um, 
yeah, that might be worth picking up. So that's kind of what's been going on on Etsy. July has been a lot slower than June was. June was my best month ever on Etsy. Um, and July has been better than last July, which I would expect because I have way more listings now, but it has not been like mind blowing or anything like that. Um, eBay, I have been selling stuff primarily around the $20 mark, 2025. Um, but I did have one sale that I thought was worth talking about. And that was this hat. So this came from that estate buy that I did in January when I picked it up. It had like its own like custom hat box and everything. And I was just like, this looks nice. Um, so, you know, I, I took it and I was like, I, I mean, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about this brand. And, um, when I got home, I ended up doing some research on it and dude, these hats start at $800. So this is a custom hat shop in, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico called Monte Cristi. And these, um, they have like weavers in Ecuador who make these hats from scratch and they're just like super fine like the uh, the weave on them just like the talent i just i can't even talk <laughs> um yeah so i'm doing research on this hat and i'm like this is like a freaking 1500 dollar hat um so i'm trying to figure out where like how much to price it at um and like more information about it. So I ended up, it was stamped inside with or signed by the weaver who actually made the hat and it was their premier weaver at the time when this was purchased, um, who is passed away since. So I ended up like finding more information about him, putting a picture of him in the, um, in the listing and, um, just sort of talking about like the fineness of the hat and the quality of it and I listed it for $750. The only other one that I could find that had sold recently was on eBay and it was a rattlesnake. It was like a kind of like a cowboy-esque hat, like a rancher hat, but it had a rattlesnake skin uh, with the rattle still on it as the hat band. Uh, so that was really cool, but it sold, that sold for 500. And so I listed mine for 750. It was a women's hat. I think if it had been a men's hat, probably could have gotten more for it. Um, and I listed a little late for the Kentucky Derby, but, um, yeah, so I listed that for 750 and I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to sit on this for like three years, um, or what's going to happen. But after, a, I think probably what, three months or something like that, um, I got an offer on eBay and, um, I got an offer for $500. I did have free shipping on there, um, but what sort of pushed me over the edge to accept that offer uh, was that it was going back to Santa Fe. It was going back to um, the city that it came from. So that just kind of like spoke to me, I guess. And so it cost me $50 to ship this hat from FedEx. Um, it was gonna be way more through USPS but I ended up doing a FedEx, which eBay made incredibly easy. I, it was just one of the options, like you put in the dimensions and then it was one of the options. And then all I had to do was take it to Walgreens and drop it off. And, um, I was able to upgrade the insurance to $500 to cover, you know, the hat, um, finding a box for it was fun. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that was a nice sale. I have not gotten feedback from the buyer, but they've gotten the package and um, they got it on July 9th because it was two day with signature FedEx. So I'm assuming it's okay. I do have 30 day returns on eBay, but I have not heard from them. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, but I was really happy with that sale. And then let's do Poshmark next. 
And like I said, Poshmark has not been particularly good. Uh, but what can I say? I don't know. I haven't been putting in all of the, the love that I used to, I guess. Um, I did sell this vintage Bastier. At first I thought, like, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it was, I put my SKU number in wrong, and not only had I put this SKU number in wrong, but, um, a lot of times if I think that I might have the right, the wrong SKU number, I go back and I see what else was listed at the same time, and then I check those SKU numbers, because a lot of times I'll put multiple items in the same bin, and then I tend to list everything, like, in consecutive order of when I um wrote it down to be listed and not only did I put this one in the wrong bin but I put like four things in the wrong bin and I guess none of them had sold yet because I never noticed so I had to like dig through to find this thing and <laughs> luckily I was able to locate it and fix all the other ones that I had messed up but um, yeah, this bodysuit sold for 45. I think I had it listed at 78. Um, I tend to list bodysuits pretty high, especially if they are vintage and they're like shapewear. But uh, yeah, 45 on that one. These boots sold pretty quickly after listing. I think less than a week. They were like moss green leather boots, really pretty. Picked them up at the bins, um, did a little leather conditioning. They weren't really scuffed up or damaged at all, but I just wanted to make sure that when the buyer got them, they would be fine. And sometimes I don't know how long they'll be sitting in my inventory. So I just want to make sure they're taken care of. So I um, added a little of that Wonder Balsam and then they sold for $63. I had a $78 asking price. That's usually my asking price for boots. Um, and so I was happy with that. And let's see, I had a very large bundle. I don't want to go over all the things in it, but there were um, two pairs of pants, one skirt, one top, and a pair of shoes. And they offered me $125, um, which was, it was okay. Um, but my earnings were $100, so I went ahead and accepted it. I also sold this Mason Jewels dress. This is a really cute like fox print dress. This was mine. Uh, it didn't fit me anymore, uh, but it had little pockets and um, yeah, just really darling. I did get some lowball offers on that, but I'm not in any hurry to sell stuff right now because I'm trying to build up my inventory and um, yeah, I just, I'm not overly in need of the the money um like I might be if I had to pay all the bills by myself but um yeah so I was able to sort of hold out for this and it's still got it's still sold within about two weeks of listing and it sold for $41 I think had it listed somewhere around Oh, I sent on a shipping discount, so I think I did 10% off, so I would have listed it at 46 I think, and then uh, my net earnings on that were 31.30, so that was pretty good. I sold a Halloween dress at almost full asking price in the middle of the summer. I was happy about that. And um, yeah, that's kind of it for... Poshmark, there's some, some $20, $25 sales, um, bread and butter, and some vintage stuff I let go for a little bit less because I've been sitting on it for so long, like four or five years. Um, yeah, uh, I've also had some really good sales on Thrilling, and I don't remember them off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ahead and switch us to the computer, and you can see them there. And then I'll be back. Read the sales on Etsy because you can't see them on Thrilling after they've sold. So um, it's actually been a pretty good month over on Thrilling. And this was one of the first things I sold. This was a little periwinkle blue dress. It's kind of like 80s, does 40s style. I just, I love the color. 
I loved the matching buttons. I thought the silhouette was really sweet. Um, and that one sold for, the prices that you see here are what it sold for minus the 10% cut that Thrilling takes. So um, $55.99 was the asking price and then it, um, my earnings would be 10% less than that. And I think this one I picked up at a Goodwill for like five or six dollars. So that's a pretty good turnaround um, on that piece. And then, wait. Yeah. And then I was so, so happy to sell this. I thought this dress was so cute. It was a little 1940s cotton, like prairie style dress. Um, it had a little side zipper. Uh, just beautiful fabric, a little bit of elastic in the sleeves, and uh, just, oh my gosh, so cute. Uh, but I've had this dress for probably seven years now, um, trying to sell it, and it finally sold on Thrilling for uh, $120, so, so glad to see that go. And then this one sold very quickly within like mm, two or three days of it going up on Thrilling site. This was a cotton and I think it was cotton and poly blend um, Hawaiian dress with tie shoulders. They were actual tie shoulders so you could adjust them. It had pockets. It was by Royal Creations Hawaii. Um, and yeah, it's half cotton, half polyester. So kind of like that percale type of fabric. Um, and this one also sold for 55. And this was the other really good, um, sale. So I don't know if you guys remember this from a haul video. I picked this up at Savers. It just caught my eye immediately completely loved it. It's like a raffia, um, it's like a straw gown from the 1960s with like this gorgeous deep scoop back and just like scalloping. Um, and that one sold for a full asking price of $2.84. So I was really happy to, um, ship that off to its next home. And then the last one I'm going to show you is this one. It is another 19, it was a 1970s piece and it was just an embroidered dress. Um, the sleeves were kind of like a bell sleeve, even though you can't really see it very well here. It had embroidery at the hem. It had embroidery on the sleeves. Um, just a couple of very small, very minor damages. This is the inside. Um, and it just had this gorgeous embroidery up the front. That one sold for $97.99. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, like I said, not making any promises for whether or not I'll be here next Monday, uh, with a what's old video or not. Uh, but I do appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate you, um, just like being patient with me. I'm sure once the kids go back to school at the end of August um, and I have at least three days a week where they are both out of my hair for an extended period that I will fall back into a productive rhythm and we'll get some more YouTube content going up over here. Um, but until then, just gotta hang out and have fun for the summer. So I will see you guys in my next video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on the way out. All right, bye.